Welcome to NaisoraLMS.com or Naisora's Learning System. We're going to dig deep into the compendium of regional anesthesia today, which is all things regional, and we will talk about top block. Now, top block is a classical example of how such a simple technique that includes an injection of the local anesthetic between the two tissue layers, between the two muscles, can be made so complicated and difficult with all the variants that are described in the literature. So let's get started. So now we are inside the Nysora's LMS or Compendium of Regional Anesthesia. And here you can see actually this is the community feed where the members are posting their own ultrasound images, anatomical images. They update various literature pieces and develop a lively discussion that's really relevant to their own clinical practice. So I cordially invite you to join Nysora LMS uh, and participate in some of these very useful discussions where you can upload your own ultrasound images, your own cases, and discuss them with our community. But if you go into the compendium of regional anesthesia, here we're going to uh, go out of the activity feed into the regional anesthesia compendium, <clears throat> and we're going to scroll down to the abdominal wall blocks. So if you go into the transversus abdominus plane block, here you can see these are the various actually techniques that do introduce a lot of confusion. You see there is immediately subcostal top block, lateral top block, posterior top block, and many clinicians when we see them actually at our workshops, the Soros Boutique workshops, they are very much confused as to what the difference among these three is and which of these three should I practice in my own hospital. So we're going to go into the lateral top block and talk about it. So that's the midline. You can see the abdomen and umbilicus. Here is the mid axillary line and the transducer is placed in the mid axillary line in a transverse position. That's really where we get the best images for this particular technique. And the image that we would like to reproduce is this one. So that is the abdominal wall, that's the external oblique muscle, that's the internal oblique muscle, transversus abdominus muscle, and that's the abdominal cavity with the bowels inside, and that is the parietal peritoneum. And if we scroll down, now you can see that this is actually the fabled Nysora's reverse ultrasound anatomy animation. And what we really want to do with this animation is we want to take the viewer from the image of the ultrasound during the lateral top block procedure and then take the viewer into the illustration. So the purpose being is that the viewer can actually ingrain these anatomical patterns and memorize what these patterns are. So the next time when you position a probe on a patient's belly, you actually can very quickly recall those patterns and reproduce the images that are necessary for the top block. So again, we're going to play this a bit more. And here you can see how from the illustration goes into the ultrasound anatomy or sonar anatomy and back. Now for the lateral tab block, the needle is introduced usually in plane, but in larger patients, actually it may be just better to do this out of plane because the shorter path of the needle to the target between the transversus abdominus and internal oblique muscle really does have some advantages as you will see. So in order to accomplish the top block, again, the needle is inserted through the skin subcutaneous tissue, through the external oblique muscle and through the internal oblique muscle to place the needle between the two fascias of the internal oblique and transversus abdominus muscles. So here is where the injection occurs, 20 to 25 milliliters on one side, if it is a lateral incision, such as would be for, let's say, colostomy, colostomy reversals, appendectomy, and things like that. So that is really all that's to it, to the top block. But what really makes top block complicated uh, is all of these various variants of the top block, subcostal, lateral, posterior. So for the purpose of this video, let's disregard all of these considerations. We will eventually refer to them in other videos, but right now all you need to do is recognize the external oblique, internal oblique, and transversus abdominus muscle and insert the needle between the two of them in the mid axillary line to accomplish the lateral top block. And we're going to demonstrate that in a video. Start scanning from the midline. So here we see the junction between the two rectus abdominus muscles and that's the upper neurosis in the middle and then what you want to do is scan laterally until you see the rectus abdominus muscle 
And here you can see the fascia of the rectus abdominis as well as the peritoneum or parietal peritoneum and the skin laterally in between the ribs and the iliac bone. So we're going to go lateral. So as we go lateral, now we see immediately also the aponeurosis of the internal oblique muscle and transversus abdominis muscle. As we continue to go down laterally, here we can see all three layers of the abdominal wall. So that's the external, internal, and transversus abdominis. When you do the top block is to use the healing. The healing of the transducer can really help you align those muscles nicely horizontally like you see in textbooks. If you, as you go more lateral, do not heal, then you're going to actually lose that nice image and the muscles seem to be slanted. So you really want to use the healing method or probe maneuver that helps you align the muscles of the abdominal wall in a sort of horizontal fashion which is really very useful. Now we continue to go laterally, laterally, laterally and again use the healing maneuver. You can see the difference without and with healing so you gotta refresh your memory on those five out of side maneuvers and then once we are somewhere in the mid axillary line that is really all that we need to perform the lateral approach to the top block and introduce a needle in an in-plane fashion to reach the layer between the fascia of the internal oblique and transversus abdominis muscle. In larger patients that can be quite challenging so instead you can actually insert the needle out of plane which is a lot easier in most patients and I personally prefer to do this out of plane. Let's review the 3D anatomy so we can understand better how the transversus abdominis plane or top block actually works. So we're going to go to the 3D anatomy first and as we go to the anatomy we're going to enlarge this video and fast forward the dissection. So here we are going to take, we are rotating the cadaver here and we're going to take the first the skin and subcutaneous tissue off. So here we go, the skin has been removed, the subcutaneous tissue is what we see and as we remove one additional layer now we see actually the fascia of the external abdominal muscle and as we take the fascia away we can clearly see the external abdominal muscle here. So we're going to now fast forward the dissection even more and now we see the external oblique and the internal oblique muscles as well. And once we take the internal oblique muscle away and dissect to the transversus abdominal spleen, here we can actually see the anterior rami of the intercostal nerves where the local anesthetic is injected. And here we can clearly see the anterior branches of the intercostal nerves in the top plane between the internal oblique and transversus abdominis plane block. That was a top block lateral approach. This is the simplest approach to all the top variations and I believe sufficient for most indications and the easiest one to implement as a service in your hospital. 